Question I get asked all the time as a corporate pilot, how do you fly from Canada to the US in a private airplane? I've done this from Canada to the US, US to Canada over the past 10 years, hundreds of times. Sierra Echo Alpha, contact Seattle Center 123905. Roger, 123905, Sierra Echo Alpha, good day. And I've never had a single problem. So I want to share uh, how I do it with all of you because I know there's a lot of people out there who are maybe doing this for the first time and they're a little bit nervous, but trust me, there's nothing to worry about because I'm going to explain it all right now. So let's dive right in. Now, the first thing you need to do is figure out where you're going to land and get customs clearance. And this has to be done at what's called a port of entry. In this case, we're gonna be flying from Calgary Spring Bank Airport to Portland, Oregon. And I already know Portland, Oregon is a port of entry airport. They do have customs, but there's some things we need to check out first. What are the times that the customs is available? Some customs offices aren't open 24 seven, and you need to make sure that you land at that airport within those operating hours. So the first thing I like to do is give that customs office a quick phone call. The reason for this is to establish communication and make sure that you have an idea that around that time, hey, we're gonna be landing on this day. Are you guys gonna be around between these times? Is there anything we need to be aware of? Are you closed for the holidays? And just give them a heads up. Make sure you are aware of anything so that you don't go through the entire flight planning process and then find out you know, the customs office is closed for some reason, which has happened before. The second thing you need to do once you've established that communication is start building out your flight plan. So you want to build your flight plan. In this case, I'm gonna be using Garmin Pilot or flightplan.com, those are my go-tos. Figure out what the weather's gonna be like and make sure that you don't have any sort of problems with regards to weather or no tabs that might make your port of entry airport inaccessible at that time. Once you've done that, then you don't necessarily have to file your flight plan but you do need to do what's called an EAPIS. And this is basically an electronic filing system to give customs a heads up with all the details related to that aircraft, the people on board, and that flight plan. Now, I've been using flightplan.com for the last 10 years and it's worked flawlessly. I've never had an issue. Now, what I love about the EAPIS platform on flightplan.com is that you can save crew information, passenger information, aircraft information. So when you create a flight plan, the EAPIS is already ready to go. And all you have to do is select which passengers that you want to include on that flight and what crew, very, very, very easy. Now, if you have new passengers or new pilots, say you have a different co-pilot flying with you that day, you can save their information in there for next time. And that's really, really easy to do. It's very straightforward. But one thing I recommend is that if you have a new passenger coming with you, I like them to send you a picture of their passport, which is usually all you need. If you're a pilot, you may have to provide uh, your pilot's license in addition to your passport. But for passengers, I just like to have them send a picture of their passport so I can input the information into the flightplan.com EAPIS system manually and make sure that there's no mistakes. Don't have someone text you what their passport information is, just have them take a picture and send it to you so you can make sure that you've done it correctly. Once you've created your EAPIS manifest, you can then submit it. I usually like to submit my manifest about 24 hours in advance prior to the flight or whenever you are going to be able to contact that customs facility after you file that EAPIS. Now the most important part, we're gonna give customs a call at our port of entry, in this case, Portland, Oregon, get landing rights, make sure they have our EAPIS and make sure everything is okay. Uh, each port of entry does have its own phone number. In this case, uh, this is it right here for Portland. I'm gonna put it on speakerphone here so you guys can hear this. Hi, it's uh, Evan here. Uh, just calling about the EAPIS I had submitted here for Charlie Foxtrot Sierra Echo Alpha. The earliest we can do is 11.15. As 11.15? Okay, can we schedule that for 11.15 then? And uh, I'll change my flight plan uh, to accommodate that? Okay. If that works. Do you want me to uh, refile in EAPIS as well, or is that okay? No, it's fine. It'll be noted. Perfect. And uh, I'll give you guys a call on uh, that morning, uh, just to double check anyways, and let you know if anything changes. All right. Okay, thank you very much. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Whew. All right, so once we've done that, we provided all the information we needed. He gave us landing rights for 11.15. And notice how he told us, no, we're not gonna be able to land at that time that we were originally planning. We were planning about 9.40. He said 11.15. So we're gonna alter our flight plan. We can't boss the customs officers around. They are in charge. So we wanna try to work with them as best as possible. Of course, if you potentially have bad weather coming in or you need to do something, they might be able to work with your schedule. But like I said, 
always just be polite. You can make requests, ask them how the weather is there, ask them if there's anything that you need to know. They will most likely be more than accommodating. So once we've done that and we've got the landing rights like we just did, what we can do is file our flight plan, do everything else as we normally would like it was a normal flight. Flying across the border is very simple. Everything happens the exact same as any other flight domestically, except that when we cross over the border, Edmonton Center is gonna transfer us to probably Seattle Center, so it's gonna be that little trade-off. But other than that, everything remains the same. Alpha contact Seattle Center 12395. Roger, 12395. Sierra Echo Alpha, good day. All right, everybody, so we are transferred to Seattle Center 12395 from Vancouver Center, and that's because we are crossing over the Canada US border. Seattle Center, it's Canadian Foxtrot Sierra Echo Alpha with you, flight level 220. Sally Foxtrot Sierra Echo Alpha, Seattle Center, ready. There you go. So the transition to go from uh, Canada to the US, very, very simple. If you're on an IFR flight plan, they're just going to hand you off to the next controller. Sally Foxtrot Sierra Echo Alpha, clear direct to Jorad. And clear direct to Jorad, uh, Sierra Echo Alpha. All right, so we've been cleared direct to Jorad. And that's going to put us on the arrival into Portland here. Autopilot's flying the airplane beautifully. And we want to make sure that if there's any sort of delays that we give customs a call. You don't necessarily have to refile an EAPIS, but make sure you give them a phone call. If you're talking to those officers, they know what's going on. That's going to save your skin. Another thing that's critically important, and I wish I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, is to make sure that all your passengers have their passports with them. Don't have them putting passports in the luggage compartment uh, where you have to get on the airplane to go grab it. Uh, make sure they have it on their person and make sure that they actually have them with them. There's been instances where people have shown up to the airport and I'll say, hey, do you have your passport with you? Not to call them out, calling them stupid, or anything but sometimes people forget and you as the pilot are responsible that everything is in line even for your passengers if a passenger doesn't show up with their with their passport or something's incorrect it is on you the pilot in command so make sure you ask them ahead of time and uh, make sure that everything's lined up and ready to go so after you land at your port of entry the first thing you need to do is taxi to the customs building and if you don't know where that is do a little pre-planning make sure you know where you're going to be taxiing to and then park the airplane Plane, shut the engines down but do not leave the airplane this is critically important you have to stay in the airplane do not let passengers go out even if they want to you know get something from the baggage compartment no everybody stays in the airplane until the customs officer comes out they will tell you when to leave the airplane make sure you have your passports with you if you're the pilot make sure you have your pilot's license with you go into the building and they will check everything get you processed and you'll be on your way they might walk around the airplane they might search the airplane it's usually it's a non-invasive thing they'll come in and scan for any sort of uh, things that you shouldn't have on the airplane, but as long as your passengers and you are squeaky clean and everything is organized, you should not have a problem. But overall, if you just do exactly what I said, you'll have no problems at all. I'm gonna make another video explaining how to go from the US to Canada. For those of you who are coming from United States into Canada, it's a little bit different, but just as easy as long as you do it correctly and do it organized. So if you enjoyed this video, everybody, if you have any questions, leave comment down in the comment section down below. I'll probably answer or someone else will. By the way, let me know what you think of the little studio space. Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, if you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. A little cheers to all the new viewers. And if you're curious on what it's like to become a pilot, what the process is, how to get your first aviation job, then I've got videos on my channel that you can check out to help get you started. Absolutely love and appreciate all the support, everybody. So we'll catch you on the next adventure. Happy and safe flying, everybody. Cheers.